All right, here's why I thought I was dealing with Don Lincoln was the director there. I want to go with somebody that's a top guy, and I thought that he was. Now, apparently that's not the case, but here's what he was talking about was these point particles. Now, again, these two particles do not exist. Forget those. But all of these do. The white one can get big and fluffy or tiny and tiny. They call that the point particle. And this is Don Lincoln. This is his article from 2013. It goes a long ways ago. And there's the black particle, exactly what I showed. And he talks about the point particle having very little mass and maybe none. And uh, he says, in summary, extended particles have a fixed size. That's the black one. That's the extended one. It's fixed. Although they may have a fuzzy edge. And that's the white fuzzy edge around it. Does it show it up here? Yeah. You see it? Oh, well, it's red because you can't be white on a white background, but it's, I'm showing the same thing. Identical. Literally identical. So, it, again, in summary, extended particles have a fixed size, although they may have a fuzzy edge. That's the black one, fuzzy edge. Point-like particles are mathematical extractions. They have no real size to speak of, and they may have zero mass. I can't dispute that. He's saying they might have a zero mass. And I've been sort of trying to work with Don for, for years, and um, I haven't gotten too far with him, but I've shown all these particles since, 19, uh, since uh, 2015. So this is why I'm trying to get a hold of Don, because I see this article. Again, I go back and forth with him, and he sort of put me aside and just let me go my way. Uh, so anyway, a tiny particle may upend physics and our own understanding of the universe. So I'm about to congratulate him on actually looking into this, because they said they put 400 people, a 400-person team, carefully sifted through 10 years' worth of data, for more than four million collisions in a Fermilab particle accelerator. And they did find that these, these things were extremely heavy. New research shows the W boson, tiny particle fundamental to formation of our universe, is heavier than scientists expected. It's like an almost entire mass of things. Now, this discovery goes against the standard model, which I've been against forever, which is the framework that scientists use to make sense of all the things they see. So every, that's why nothing makes sense, because of what they're looking at is, is they have to try to fit it into what they were told is the Bohr model, and the Bohr model doesn't work. Only electron flood theory works. And I show this in extreme detail. So, so I'm, go, I'm going to go up and congratulate him on having these people look and they find the particles that I've been telling him about. So I go to the director of Fermilab thinking he's a director. He's not. And the director is resigning. And, and don't forget, now this is Don Lincoln again, Fermilab. He's, he he's apparently was a scientist there, or is a scientist there. I, I don't know. He's a teacher and so forth. But he, he was always, to me, the face of Fermilab. And I thought he was a director there. But anyway, so I go to congratulate him on actually finding the particles that we, I had been trying to show them. And I come up here looking for the Fermilab director, and it says, no, we're looking for the search for a new one. It says, on September 10th, 2021, the current director, Nigel Lockyer, which I, I didn't know he was, I thought it was Don. So he announced that he will step down in spring 2022 after eight years at the helm of America's premier particle physics laboratory, which is obviously Fermilab. So in October 2021, the Board of Directors at the Fermilab Alliance, LLC, appointed a committee to conduct an international search for the next director of Fermilab. The Fermilab Director Search Committee, led by Walter Massey, is conducting a broad international search. So all everybody in the world. This website provides the latest information about the status of the search process. The search committee welcomes input on the search process or the names of any potential candidates. Please share any comments which will be held in confidence through this particular address here, Fermilab. You know, as a matter of fact, I did send something off to show them that I wanted to be involved with the new 
director, whoever that might be. And I sent a bunch of pictures of stuff I've been doing. And I congratulated them on finding their particles. And when it came back saying address not found, I did what they did here. You see the dot com, dot com, dot. You can't have the dot. So it's got to be fair me, whatever it is here. Dot com only. The last dot has to go away. All right, so they're looking for a new director, apparently. All I care about is being able to speak and be heard. I, I think I have not been able to be heard. Well, I know that I haven't been able to be heard. And I, I think I have as much valid information as anybody else. I've shown all my... I'm going to show you some, what, some of the things I sent them. And, of course, there's a particle. I showed you... Go, I went back to... Whoops went way back to like 2011 when they were getting started to try to find these muons. Now, I've always suspected that everything is a dipole and that was years and years and years ago. Now, here's what I found. Remember this name, muons. They're looking for muons and they're still looking for them today. However, I just happen to have them at your leisure. Muon neutrinos. What does that mean? Electron neutrino. What does that mean? There are two particles held together, a black one and a white one. And when they hit something, it's called Cheryankov radiation, it means when they come into another medium and they crash, which is here, they separate. The electrons go into showers and the muons go into just a black ball, can't get through. And that's what we we did exactly what they they were looking for. There's no difference whatsoever, and we used light to start with. So we didn't start with gigantic particles and just hope we're finding the smallest particle. We started basically with as close to the power, smallest power as you can get is light, and then after that light hit here, it split. And I sh I sent that showing we have the muons and the electron showers, and then I sent this. Whoops. Where am I here? Hold on. Okay, I sent him a whole batch of stuff, and I sent him the regular light pulse red laser with the particle here in the wave because the particle has a magnetic field, creates a push against all the other particles. I showed him light accelerating, so we have particles. We have the normal wave. This is acceleration concussing at the Venturi, which is the accelerator. It forces the light to accelerate and s s splash through here. Um, whether it's accelerating or not, I don't really care. People say, oh, that's not acceleration. Well, fine, I don't really care. I'm telling you, this is a hell of a lot of more energy than it was back here. You see that? Back here, you had virtually nothing. Now you have a total increase in explosiveness here. And it's literally fission and fusion. Because that particle, that black and white particle right there, no longer is stuck together. That means fission. And where did it fizz? It fizzed right there. And the black balls can't get through. They go around and they reattach instantaneously because this is an extremely small distance. And the only reason we can see this is because of, of the luminosity, the radiance, the glow, the energetic reaction. Otherwise, you see nothing. You see up there? There's no energy up here. You don't see anything there. That's why we can see this with these CMOS smartphones. They've known about this since 2015. And we've been doing this since, I think, 2012, probably. Rod was taking these kind of pictures. And then they, in 2015, they started to realize, wow, these things work as cosmic ray detectors. Now, Rod was doing it right on top of the... the atomic interaction. Basically, this is a subatomic interaction because light is a subatomic particle. It is not an atom. It's smaller than an atom. However, it has it consists of two pieces, the blacks and the whites. And to me, each one of these sides is an electron. So the black and white on this side is an electron. That's an electron. They're bar magnets. They glue together. They bounce. One of them alone would stick into you. You know, that's electricity, lightning, static, that type of thing. Light is a different thing. Light is a semi-complete particle that bounces off you. It bounces you and warms you up a little bit, that's it. It doesn't burn you, basically. 
You know, you can focus it in so that it will burn you, absolutely. This should burn the hell out of something right here. I mean, I don't know what the, the energy value is there, but it's, you can see it's astronomical. Can we use that energy? I don't know. I think we might be able to and might be able to get free energy out of it. But it's no question, we split this, this is fission, right here, that's the fission. This is fusion coming back together. This is, as far as I'm concerned, there's some kind of raw energy going on there. And it is exactly what CERN and the rest of them wanted to know. So anyway, I want to be involved in a new director program here. At least I want to be able to talk to somebody and interact and show them what I feel I have shown what they are showing. Only I'm showing the real thing and they're just showing basically a little picture of it. Right? So I don't want to be disrespectful, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it's about time that this was looked at. Again, these pictures go back to 2015. So, this has been a while. Alright, I know I've shown you how we developed this spray of particles, which is a division here, which is fission. That's when they come back together, it's fusion. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is cold desktop fusion which is an enormous amount of energy here. I don't know how we're going to harvest it, but we, we need to separate and, and collect one or the other, the black or the white. I don't think, you know, somehow we need to filter this energy into something and harvest it. I originally thought we could harvest it through transition metals with this white, and I still think that's true. But somehow, somehow we need a collection device where it can hold just these white particles. I don't know if that's possible. We need to do some research, some engineering. I don't have all the answers, but I have some things that show the bosons, the muons, the muons, the electron showers, the neutrinos, whatever you want to call them. And I think this is is a, the only hope we have is for an immediate solution is something like this and if this works all these are is lasers all that is is a, a little venturi and all we need is a solar collector and then we use the standard harvesting devices that hold energy somehow we have to filter that down that's all something similar to this very very simple so you know I'm just hoping that they will interact with us they're here to try to help us to get free energy I thought that was the whole story but I have found there was a lot of pushback. Now, maybe, well, let me put it this way. If there's going to be a new Fermi Lab director, I want to be involved. And I want you to contact them through that address there um, that I showed before and just say, at least look into this. I don't care about being a director or anything. I certainly don't. I'm 73 years old. That's not my goal in life. Now, i got a lot of other things going on. I'd like to be able to comment. I'd like to be able to discuss. I'd like to be able to interact. I have what I think is good, valid, scientific information that needs to be looked into. That's all I'm asking for. I don't think I've, uh, I've presented a bad case here. I think I've presented a very strong case. I thank you. I love you all.